Sumerian alphabet. Sumerian start. These are called the Sumerian elixirs. And basically, uh, I don't, I can't dig out all the pictures here, but he showed that the Sumerian glyphs, all the Sumerian index of the major Sumerian glyphs, are in fact the shape, the waveguide that you shine a laser through if you wanted to make subcellular parts. So you, there you are in a laboratory, you've got this laser, and you want a lens to shine light through to make subcellular stuff parts, you would use Sumerian. This is George Mappel's work. Now why would Sumerian be the index of how to focus coherent light to make subcellular parts? Somer means dragon. S-O-M-M-A-I-R means dragon. Uru. Ura. Sumerian. It means more than South Sea Sumerian. From mother is another meaning. So why here's Sumerian now? Optical physics for subcellular genetic engineering. Here's Hebrew and Sanskrit. Optical physics for doing genetic engineering. How did that software end up here? Pretty high class software, actually. Did somebody pay for it? Who ordered it? Adobe Illustrator? No, something even more expensive. Cool. <laughs> so um, we have just a few more slides in this series. This is the emerald tablets of both Hermes. You see the caduceus? And this is a derivative root called Banpo, the Kapha tablet of the original Banpo Tibetan. And if you look here, that the shaman is seeing the plasma residue enter the tornado and says, you know what that is? That's called a swastika. Okay? Now, if we animate in 3D the charge path into the center of this plasma domain, I hope this is bright. Oh, yeah, you can even see it here. That's good. Now I'm going to stop this right here. Wait, wait, back up. We'll never do this in PowerPoint, but Keynote can do it. Look at that. What does that look like? Why would there be a swastika right there? Now, all I did was I took this golden mean spiral. See that golden mean spiral right there? That made the infinite 3D physics of the origin of the Holy Grail, it's in the blood. That's the charge path into DNA, literally. That's what I've animated. And I just take the side view and I get something that might look familiar to old Adolf. <laughs> <laughs> That's a charge compression algorithm. It's a swastika. Now why do you see that when you're going into the mind of the ancient shaman? The Bon Po. Here's the, here's the Bon Po master. You know what a Bon Po master does? Our friend Terry Willard in Calgary, they, the Bonco master, his name was Christopher Hansard, uh, they built a bonfire. They put truckloads of sacred herbs in this thing, and it burned like as high as a, a skyscraper as a flame for like a week in midwinter in Calgary, this bonfire. And the, the Bonco master is the ability to make a flame called Bon. Fire. It's their origin of the term. <laughs> the the, the Bonpo, the test for whether you are initiated is if you can make a flame with your mind. Why do you need this information to be able to make a flame with your mind? Let me give you another clue right. here. What, sir? It's the way you go into that flame. Yes. That's right. It's how you go into the flame, how you create flame. Actually, I was present when Dahani Wahoo did the initiation for the Cherokee and the same test was used. Can you make a flame with your mind? It's a compression physics. It's a wave function. Yeah? The Zarathustrian priest made a... And they, they say that Zarathustra is another name for Enki, but <laughs> you might laugh. <laughs> so um, we're talking about this, the plasma dynamics of biological flame and transmutation and alchemy. That's kind of where we're going. So at this point, we could go back to our history a little later. Yes, you had a question? Yeah, with um, this flame thing, uh, was there a point where um, the flame and then it Here, the, the 
Um, so there are a lot of stories like that, uh, particularly I've seen them with the Tibetans. Uh, Valerie, who composed the last chapter in our book for young people, The Implosion Secret Science of Ecstasy and Immortality, was initiated by Kala Rinpoche in Tibet. And she, her bliss experience as reported in the book is after that initiation, seeing that fire and floating off her bed also, actually. Um, but, and if you see what's happening as we discussed when the Tibetan dies, the appearance of rainbows, that the flame, the charge implosion, is creating the distribution of plasma, which is, creates a form of sustainability, the doorway to immortality. That's where we're going with this. But to, in terms of uh, remembering who it was, you probably had a soul agreement in the past to connect with and finish some major assignment. <laughs> I guess there, but yeah, angelic. But we should do that privately later. But still, that's a beautiful story, dear. It's the kind of story you should draw pictures for your grandchildren. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so um, yes, go ahead. Well, I think that's, I mean, that is the downside to the story. I actually agree with you, what you said, but I also think there's an upside to the story. I think what you say is correct, but I think it's important to